Vicky the Viking is very near and dear to my heart, as it is to a lot of people who grew up with it. It's one of those shows you watch on TV as a kid and still fondly look back two years later. The story follows Vicky, a young Viking boy and the son of the village chief, who completely and utterly lacks any courage or physical aptitude, but has a bright mind and solves his problems through clever thinking. Much to the dismay of his father, who is of the opinion that brute strength and fighting your enemies head-on is the way to go for any self-respecting Viking. Most of the conflict in the series comes from some variation of these two attitudes clashing. Usually the crew runs blindly into danger or causes problems for themselves or others, and Vicky has to come up with a plan to save the day, often accompanied by some kind of moral. The anime is based on the Swedish children's book Vike Viking by Runa Jonsson, which was published in 1963, as well as some of its sequels. These books were rather successful in many European countries, especially so in Germany, where it won the Youth Literature Award. In the early 70s, German and Austrian TV broadcasters CDF and ORF won an adaptation for television, which was produced by animation studio Suyo Eizo. Apparently they went to Japan to keep the cost of production low, and for Suyo it was a good chance to cash in on the European market. This company had a thing for anime based on western novels. The same trio would go on to make series out of Pinocchio and Maya the Bee, another absolute classic. Because of financial troubles, Suyo Ace would break apart and be reborn as a new legal entity by the name of Nippon Animation in 1975, which then continued to create great series such as Heidi, Hell Yeah and the World Masterpiece Theatre. And Vicky was one of the first shows they worked on. There exists three seasons to a total of 78 episodes and a movie. For the German localization alongside the dub, the score was completely remade, which was then used for every other western dub. Personally, I prefer that one, and I've only seen a handful of episodes from the Japanese dub, but I'd say both are definitely perfectly serviceable soundtracks. Listen to this and tell me it's not totally awesome. Can you hear how cool this guy looks? What I'm trying to say with this is there exist two versions of the show and they feel recognizably different while being virtually the same. Interestingly, it's difficult to say which one of them is the original, since the German version aired a whole two months before the Japanese one in January of 1974. It was fairly popular in both countries, and later also ran in the Netherlands, Belgium, Italy and France. It also got an English dub eventually, which is not great, but definitely watchable. The translation is a bit iffy in places. It got released on VHS in Britain, but to the best of my knowledge it never aired on TV in the UK or the United States, which is a real bummer honestly. Because of that it seems to be largely unknown in the English speaking anime community. You see, here in Germany Vicky is an absolute classic. The show was broadcast well over 20 times in its entirety since it came out. And for good reason. It's a lot of fun. The focus of Vicky is on adventure. There's no shortage of interesting environments and situations to encounter. The setting allows them to explore shit tons of different countries and cultures. They visit Iceland, England, France, the Netherlands, they come all across Central Europe up until Hungary, Greece and Russia and even America at some point. Basically everywhere the real Vikings were, Vicky and the crew spend an episode or two. Unlike the real Vikings, they spend much less time pillaging stuff. Usually when they come to a new place there's either some bad guy there causing trouble for the people and they defeat him, or the locals are just dicks who trick and attack them and the episode ends with them escaping. When I rewatched Vicky for this video, the thing that surprised me the most was how endearing the characters are. Despite what I said earlier, Vicky and his dad Halva have a really great father-son dynamic. Halva is kinda dumb, 
and as the series goes on, he learns to rely on Vicky's advice. And whenever he fucks up as chief of the village and does something stupid, Vicky helps him save face in front of his men. You can really see that those two care about each other. Quick rundown of the rest of the cast. There's Urube, an old wise guy who knows a lot about the world and likes explaining stuff. He's basically the only adult with more than two brain cells in the crew. Snarder and Tude, who use every opportunity they get to bicker and fight, but are actually best bros for life. Olme, a bard, he talks about poetry all the time and his singing is kinda terrible, but he's a nice guy to have around. Faxe is a friendly giant type of guy, he's the strongest character but not the smartest. And then there's Gorm, who always does this when he's happy. So, the general idea is that these guys aren't the brightest bulbs in the box, and most of the time they're either fighting or looking for treasure. The show is very episodic and generally has the same format. The crew gets into trouble, Vicky rubs his nose and has a flash of inspiration at some point, and then comes up with a solution. Vicky doesn't care very much about riches. He's usually more concerned with the safety of his comrades or helping people. His plans are always peaceful in nature, often involving tricking enemies or befriending them, or just inventing stuff. Now most of the ideas he comes up with are only clever in-universe. Examples include such classics as using sea lions for water skiing, bringing out of a prison using a sawfish, and of course tying kites to a longboat so it can fly. Now obviously if you try this in real life, no one would call you smart. But that's not the point. The point is to solve problems through thinking and not brute force. That's pretty much the crux of the show. Here's what's cool about Vicky. He is the hero of his story, but he does it without kicking ass. In his village, all the grown men are strong and dumb, and all the women are calm and collected housewives. He lives in a world of gender stereotypes, but Vicky himself doesn't give a fuck. He's not ashamed of running away from a wolf or being afraid of pirates, simply because it's the smart thing to do. Vicky teaches children that it's okay to not be hashtag masculine, and honestly, I dig it a lot. Just look at his design. Could you tell from that alone whether he's a boy or a girl? I didn't when I was a kid, and it made the show fairly popular among boys and girls. This show doesn't care much about realism. There's a dragon in one episode and the Native Americans have steam power for some reason. The focal point is always having a fun adventure first and foremost. It also draws a lot from other classic stories. In Greece they're trapped in a giant maze. At one point they defend a four against a Trojan horse. There's a ghost ship, a magic dwarf sword, Pandora's box, references to the Arthurian legend and Icarus and some other stuff we've missed, I'm sure. As a preschooler I enjoyed Vicky the Viking a lot and it was obviously crafted with much love. So, for anyone watching this video, maybe you're asking yourself right now, that's cool and all, but why would I care about this 40 year old show I have no nostalgia for? Is it good enough to be worth my time? Would you recommend it? Well, it certainly isn't bad. It has aged a bit. The animation is certainly nothing to write home about, and there's no subtitle version available, so you'd have to watch the somewhat mediocre English dub. And I can't deny it's just totally not relevant at all. So what's the point of this video then? Why would I talk about this? Well, hear me out. Earlier last year I was rereading a bit of Finland Saga, as you do, and I came across this panel here. Do you see it? I lost my shit when I noticed this. The Flake Vikings just casually chilling in the background. And here they are again. Vicky doesn't just have a quick cameo here. Makoto Yukimura decided to do a full-blown homage. Okay, so in episode 2, Vicky wants to sail on his father's ship because he promised to take him on his next journey, but the other Vikings are like, nah, you're just a little kid man, we won't take you along. So Vicky decides to hide in a barrel and wait until they can't turn back anymore so they have no choice but to take him with them. He falls asleep inside the barrel and they eventually discover him because of his snoring. This scene plays out almost the exact same way in Vinland Saga. Chapter 2 Thorfinn wants to go on his father's boat, but he's going to war so he won't take him with him. So then they depart and Thorfinn's nowhere to be seen, and when they are in the open sea he comes out and marvels at the ocean. There's even the bit where the really strong guy has a comically large aura, like what? I think it's safe to say that Yukimura was influenced a fair bit by Vicky the Viking. He's not exactly subtle with the references. Okay, so after that I remember this other guy with a really popular manga about pirates, one Eiichiro Oda, and that he mentioned Vicky in an interview some time ago. Vicky the Viking was the start of his interest in pirates. Huh. Interesting. Now this is actually a somewhat well-known fact among Deep Lore One Piece fans. One Piece is certainly the only context I've ever seen anyone even mention Vicky in anime discussions online. The influence is messy and truly a noble without direct quote. Including what's shown in this video, an unsighted claim of influence is not worth listening to. He loved manga, especially Dragon Ball, and this weird German-Austrian-Japanese production called Vicky the Viking. So after discovering the Vinland thing I thought, wouldn't it be crazy if Oda 2 had a reference somewhere in this manga? 
He totally did look at this. One Piece, also chapter 2, Luffy also starts his grand journey sleeping in a fucking barrel. How have I never noticed this before? Surely that is not just a coincidence, right? The details are different, but why a barrel and why is he sleeping? I am totally going mad right now, where is this wiki hiding? This is just the stuff I found, there could be tons of other works he affected in some way. I find it absolutely astonishing how the simple cartoon I watched as a kid has influenced two of my all-time favorite manga and how I discovered these three works completely independent from one another and happened to make this connection. This children's book Runa Jonsson wrote in the 60s is like a spark of inspiration that traveled around the world and influenced the lives of so many people. And sure, this is only a very small part of two very long series, and inspiration comes from many places. But I love discovering stuff like this. I love this shit. Finding out where the things you like come from is one of the coolest things there is to analyzing media. And that is why, to come back to the question earlier, yes. I absolutely would recommend checking out Vicky the Viking. Especially if you're a fan of Inland Saga or One Piece, but also just in general. Ah, it's a pretty long show, don't worry about it, here's a few episodes I think are pretty cool, check them out if you want. But even if you don't, it's okay, you've made it at least this far into the video, which means now you know that Vicky the Viking is a show that exists. <laughs>